that is possible. Hello fellow space enthusiasts. If you're like me, then you enjoy a nice cup of coffee or two throughout the day. <sighs> Missing a morning coffee is not ideal. Can you think of anything worse than not having a cup of coffee in the morning? Of course you can. That's right, Molly. But for one astronaut, this was the dilemma he was facing. And not just for one morning, but for the nearly 11 days he would be in space. And he wasn't happy about it. The astronaut in question was a United States Navy captain, Walter Marty Shearer Jr., better known as Wally. As he pointed out, in the real world, most naval officers live on coffee. He was the commander of Apollo 7, and he had been told that coffee was off the menu. On his previous two space missions, missing out on a coffee wasn't too much of a big deal, because Mercury Atlas 8 lasted just over 9 hours, and Gemini 6 was just over 25 hours. So on launch day, after his first coffee of the day, he didn't have too long to go before his next drink. But now he was facing a mission lasting around 11 days. The importance of coffee to Shearer was pointed out by fellow astronaut Michael Collins, who wrote in his book, Carrying the Fire, that Shearer's morning ritual was 45 minutes on guffaws, coffee and war stories before finally settling down to work. Well now, Wally wanted to take coffee into space. He wrote in his book, Shearer's Space, that having given up smoking, I wasn't going to lose the coffee argument, even if it meant resorting to a ruse. When he did ask to have coffee on board, he was told no, and can you guess why? Well, it wasn't because it wasn't possible to make hot coffee in an Apollo command module, because as Shearer pointed out, the spacecraft fuel cells made hot water, 150 degree water, so you could reconstitute freeze-dried coffee easily. And it wasn't because NASA had ever had a bad experience with coffee either. Up until then, the most pressing issue that an astronaut had experienced with coffee was Alan Shepard during the countdown to his Mercury Redstone 3 mission. On that occasion, as the countdown dragged on, Shepard felt the need to go to the bathroom because of all the coffee he had drunk. Not until Shepard was saying how bad it was to audit in any longer did the controllers give him permission to go, literally in his suit. The resistance to its inclusion came from within NASA from people who considered it too much of a stimulant. They also stated that it added nothing to the crew's calorie or nutritional intake. Facing the prospect of no coffee during his mission, Shearer went to war. If his bosses and the medical people were saying no, he needed to come up with a cunning plan to change their mind, and so he decided to give them a taste of their own medicine. He decided to put his plan into action during a meeting at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. At that meeting, there was his boss, Dick Slayton, Dr. Robert Bob Gilruth, the director of the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center, and Dr. Charles Chuck Berry, a NASA medical officer who liked to be known as the astronaut's doctor. She later wrote, At the break, a cart was rolled into the conference room with no coffee. According to Shira, Gilruth got angry, and Shira chose that moment to stand up and say, Gentlemen, since you deem it inappropriate for the crew of Apollo 7 to drink coffee on the mission, I thought you might try doing without it for just one day. His plan worked and he would later say, I got my point across and we had coffee on the flight. On launch day, Shearer sat down to breakfast and enjoyed a cup of coffee before going to the launch pad. His next drink of coffee would be in space, the first ever to be consumed aboard an American spacecraft. After Apollo 7 had launched into space and before the misery of a head cold had struck him, Shearer was enjoying the mission, saying, it's a fantastic world up here. When the crew performed a successful rendezvous with their S4B stage, Isley exclaimed, Hey, break out the champagne, we made it. Shearer replied, Right, I have a whole cup of coffee to celebrate. Shearer later recalled, After the rendezvous, we had something to celebrate, and I recall vividly that I treated myself to a plastic bag of hot coffee. In fact, Shearer would recall how a drink of coffee was a high point twice a day for me. He would report to the ground, we're finishing off our first meal, I've had my first cup of coffee. He would also send a little dig towards Dr. Berry and all the others who had opposed its inclusion by saying, they can't take it away from me now. Of course, having coffee on board led to a new practice, the coffee break, which is how Shira introduced one of the crew's TV shows. He 
Is, is this a fully automated flight? That's true. I see we have uh, another crewman coming in from his coffee break here. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. Lo and behold, it is our navigator. He found himself. Coffee was in space to stay. And in fact, it became a staple for the following Apollo crews. On Apollo 11, Michael Collins would tell the ground. 11 Houston, we see a box full of goodies there, over. Oh, we really have them, Charlie. we got all kinds of good stuff. We've got coffee up here in the upper left and uh, various uh, breakfast items, uh, bacon uh, in little small bites and uh, beverages like uh, fruit drink. And over in the center part, we have uh, oh, all kinds of things. During the drama of Apollo 13, Ground Control would say, Well, we could figure a way to get a hot cup of coffee up to you. It probably tastes pretty good about now, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure would. Uh, you don't realize how cold this thing becomes. Uh. Hang in there, it won't be long now. With a powered down command module, it wasn't possible for them to warm their drinks and food with hot water. It's fair to say that men travel to the moon on rocket fuel and coffee. Here in Mission Control, the coffee cup has uh, become an appliance second only to the headset in uh, usefulness here. Bringing the coffee story up to date, astronauts aboard the International Space Station get to enjoy coffee as part of their menu, as seen here by my fellow countryman, Tim Peake. Let's go find a cup of coffee. Now our coffee packet is filled with nice hot water, we just need uh, a little plastic straw. Insert the straw, take the cap off and drink. But this is not the end of the story for coffee in space. In 2008, during his second space flight, Donald Don Petit experimented with a new way to drink in space. You don't sit around, you float around, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was floating around and I got the, uh, there's this eureka moment. I remembered some stuff from school and I got this idea that if, if I made a cup with this shape like this, with this acute angle, then fluid placed in this cup will creep up the side with the acute angle and park itself right next to the lip. Coffee was evidently important to Don because after replacing Donald Thomas on the STS-113 crew, he requested 100 bags of instant coffee to be added to the shuttle's manifest for his first space flight. The drinking cup has evolved from a simple piece of plastic into this contraption that Chell Lindgren is shown demonstrating. I can't help thinking that the way Tim Peake drank coffee looks a lot simpler and also safer with the hot water being contained in the drinks bag. But I suppose any way to bring Earth-like behaviours into the zero-g environment can add a little psychological boost during long-duration flights. A cup would also enable you to smell that coffee aroma. During a SpaceX Crew-5 mission, Nicole Mann demonstrated the new and improved free-floating coffee cup. The concept of using a cup, though, also introduces a new chore to the astronauts' lives, washing up, or to our American cousins, doing the dishes. In 2015, the first espresso coffee machine was taken into space and installed aboard the ISS. The machine, called ISS Espresso, was first used appropriately enough by Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. With the new coffee machine aboard, she was able to enjoy a cup on International Coffee Day. Apart from a tasty addition to the space station crew's menu, were there any other advantages to taking it into space? To give the crew a little more pep in its one small step for man. Well, there you go. But actually, it was also used to study fluid dynamics. The um, espresso machine, <laughs> which of course is uh, it's kind of a nice addition to our, our life up here, but it's also a, um, an interesting um, uh, technology um, demonstrator um, and, and research facility about uh, fluid dynamics and handling um, high pressure and, and high temperature fluids in, uh, in weightlessness. The coffee machine was brought back to Earth at the end of 2017. Finally, a note on readapting to drinking coffee on Earth after a long duration space flight. As shown here, don't forget about gravity or it could ruin your day. Luckily for astronaut Thomas Marshburn, the cup was empty. So there you go, coffee in space. 
From Shearer's battle to get it onto his menu, to Petit's coffee cup, to the first espresso coffee machine, the story of coffee in space has come a long way. Thanks to Walter Shearer, astronauts are now able to enjoy their caffeine fix as much as the next person. Cheers.